This is a hunk of silver ore, and today we will make it into silver metal. Welcome to Wheeler Scientific, and this is a continuation of the Element series. Last year I made my way out west to collect some ores, and one of those ores was this hunk of silver. The first step is to break up the 3 kilogram hunk into smaller pieces. I don't have a rock crusher, which forced me to do it the old fashioned way, with a hard hammer and a hard surface. I wrapped it with a towel to keep pieces from flying everywhere. Breaking the rock apart, we can see the crystal size inside, and you can generally tell the ore's quality by the crystal structure. We see here that we have a small structure that shows the ore's quality being high, so I hope to recover a few grams from this ore sample. The reason for breaking up the ore was, firstly, it wouldn't have fit in the crucible if I didn't to. I only have a 10 kilogram crucible to fit in my furnace, so it has to work with my 10 kilogram crucible. Secondly, I need to break it up to increase the surface area so the reaction can take place quicker. Now with all the rock crushed up, I started filling up my crucible, and I quickly realized that I was going to have to do two runs. All the ore was not going to fit into one crucible. I divided up all the crushed rock into two equal portion runs so that they can actually fit in the crucible along with the flux material that I needed. So the next step is prepare the flux. The reduction needs to be carried out at high temperatures, which requires a way for the reaction to take place. And this is where the flux material comes in. Flux is four parts sodium bicarbonate and one part silicon dioxide. Ordinary play can sand can be used instead of pure silicon dioxide. This flux mixture acts as the solvent for the reaction. We can now start the furnace and get ready to melt as the charge is ready to go. I don't have to mix it up here too well because once it starts getting hot, it'll start forming currents in the fluid which will mix it all up for me. The ore I have here is a mix of silver sulfide and lead sulfide. The first step is to reduce the sulfides to a metallic form, in this case the free silver and the free lead. We can use a more reactive metal to replace the less reactive silver and lead through a reduction process. In this case, I will use iron, which will turn into iron sulfide, leaving the metal as lead and silver in their free elemental form. reduces the sodium bicarbonate to sodium carbonate, and the purpose of the sodium carbonate is to lower the melting point of the sand. It acts as a flux material, pulling the impurities out and holding on to them. The flux also acts as the solvent here, which allows the reaction to take place and dissolves the iron and iron sulfide. This melting process can take a while to carry out and it depends on the amount of ore you have. It is important to keep stirring it during the reaction to keep, make sure all material reacts to completion. You can tell when the reaction is over with when there is no more iron being dissolved, and just poking it with a big metal stick you'll be able to feel it slowly dissolve throughout the reaction, and then once you realize that no more is going, you're all good to go. After a few hours, the reaction is all done now, and we can begin the pour. With this, I need to prep the conical mold that I made. We do this by just a quick coat of oil, which will keep the material from sticking to the metal. Now it's time for the pour. I pour this into a conical mold. The great thing about a conical mold is it helps separate the heavy metals that we produced from the flux material as there's a smaller portion where the metal will be, and it'll make it a lot easier to break it apart. The heavy metal sinks to the bottom, and the lighter flux just floats on the surface. In 
I dumped it out too soon, and the flux was solid, but the lead was still liquid. Whoops. I just threw it back into the mold and crucible and just remelted it, this time letting it cool completely before dumping it out. I made 696 grams of lead and silver for this run. Now it's time for the next run. I repeated the same exact process. Start the furnace, melt, add iron, stir, 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 wait, and wait. After I poured, I gave it this time enough time to bowl solidify. After I broke off the flux and collected the materials, I was given a recovery of 826 grams of lead and silver. The difference can just be chalked up to the difference in throughout the ore and my human error, of course. Our lead here contains our silver, and we need to separate it. I could oxidize it all away, but there's way too much lead here, and that would take way too long to oxidize, and I don't have a way to oxidize it properly. And I don't even have a large enough cupel to oxidize it in. So I'm going to use a process called the Parks process. This process uses the fact that silver is more soluble in zinc. So when I mix zinc with the molten metal, the silver will dissolve into the zinc metal. The first step is to fit the lead into the crucible, and the nice thing about lead is I can just use a torch to liquefy it and get it all ready to go. Now with it all in the furnace, we can start the reaction plop a few pieces of zinc into it, and we can get it going. Those of you who have done any organic chemistry can think of this as a liquid-liquid separation. Instead of being carried out in a separatory funnel, it's carried out at high temperatures in a crucible. I have to watch the temperature here as to not boil the zinc. This furnace will super easily boil the zinc, so I need to monitor the propane. I also need to stir enough so that the zinc can dissolve all the silver. Once the silver is dissolved, I remove the zinc and let it cool. The zinc just floats on the surface here, and you can see that there's a distinct layer due to the density. And once I take it out and plop it into a metal container, you see it solidifies almost instantly. I then took off the zinc and placed it into the beaker. Zinc can easily be dissolved in hydrochloric acid, but the silver will be left alone. Ignore the spill. I might have scraped off some lead here, which will not be affected by the acid also, and all the lead will be removed in the final step. Now with the zinc dissolved, I can remove the acid and wash it a few times with water.
Next, the metal is placed in a crucible with a bit of borax to protect the metal and remelt it. Breaking it out of the borax, I can see that it's definitely not pure silver. So the last step is cupellation. We carry this out in a furnace in a cupel. The cupel is made out of bone ash, which absorbs the lead. It does this through oxidation of the lead, which then the lead oxide is removed and absorbed. The precious metal will not be removed because they won't oxidize. Well, actually silver does this really cool thing where it makes silver oxide, but it's too hot in the furnace so that it's not able to be stable, so it converts right back to silver metal. And after a while, the boundary where of soaked up lead no longer moves, so we know that it's done and we can take our cupel out and let it cool. Now let's see the results. We can crack open the cupel, and our final weight of silver is 7 grams. Well, that's another element checked off the periodic table. On to the next one. Thank you for watching to the end, and considering you watched the end, you might want to subscribe and like. I have plenty more content to come, and you'll want to stay up to date on this channel. That's the best way to do so. If you have any questions, drop those in the comment section below, or even better, join my scientific Discord server. I look forward to seeing you again. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.